Good evening everyone. I'm just going to do a uh, second little video here about um, putting a uh, C++ based Lambda function onto AWS. Uh, the first one that, uh, that I did was actually had to do it locally. So on your PC, you had to build it on your PC and then push it into uh, AWS through the CLI. Uh, and this one, we're going to be repeating the exact same code base, except I'm going to be developing it in Cloud9. And really what I'm looking at here is kind of just comparing the two development environments and whether there's pros and cons of each. Uh, because of that, I'm not going to go through all the code and everything else. I do recommend, if you're interested, to go back to this repo. And if you go in here, there's another video um, that can uh, will walk you through how to build this and all the sort of great details. So in this one, I'm really going to focus on the Cloud9 environment. And with that, um, Cloud9 is a web-based IDE that you can use on AWS. And uh, with that, because it is a web-based um environment you do have to set up a VPC and you do ha actually have it to have backed by an EC2 instance. Um, so the first thing you have to do is of course create a VPC unless someone has already done it for you. Here I've just gone in and created a, a quick VPC, it only takes a few minutes. Um, my CIDR block is uh, just 10 000, 24 so 256 IP addresses, you know, more than enough than I need here. Um, once you have your VPC set up, uh, you do need to throw in a subnet. So uh, I usually do, you know, 24 and then do 26 that breaks it down to in, in the fours um, So I usually have you know two in the public two in the private and make it uh, available as well So with that of course here you actually only need one uh, We do need it to be public uh, because you're going in through this web interface So with that we do have to put an internet gateway So we create an internet gateway we attach that internet gateway to the VPC that we created uh, Then of course we need a route, ta route, route table here, a public route table, and to make it public, really what you're doing is you're just adding the routes, or editing the routes, adding the 000, so everywhere, the internet, uh, to that internet gateway. So that way it'll know where to route that internet uh, traffic out into the gateway. And of course, here we're just associating with that particular subnet that you created. So with that, and you also have your security groups, of course, so you could clamp it down a little more. And your knuckles, you could actually, probably be a good idea if you're doing this, to uh, knock it down so only the um, your IP address is allowed in. That would be a good way to kind of keep it nice and secure when you can come in through. So with that, we've got a VPC up, uh, up and running. You go in and you can go into um, AWS console, go into Cloud9, you'll see something like this. I've actually already have a, uh, an environment uh, created. I'll go just go through the steps of making another environment. Um, I'm just gonna tear this down afterwards. Um, we can see here, we pick the environment type for, for um, what I'm going to be doing, and I suspect for most people on their own to do, it would be direct access, although there are several other ways you can connect. Uh, the other big thing is the instance type. Because this is just the IDE and you're not really running everything, uh, now if you were actually doing some larger tests, I probably wouldn't do it that way. I'd probably have it set up so that you're doing your development, where you're doing just a lot of um, work on the, in the IDE, and then be spinning off somewhere else to do your full test suite. So here, the T2 Micro, and of course, the main reason why I do that is because the T2 Micro is super cheap. Uh, at this particular, you know, this price will vary depending on the um, region you're in, but just in US East 1, we can see here, uh, at this price, uh, $1 will give you 86 hours. So it's uh, super cheap to have it up and running. The other thing that's really nice, as we see when we create the environment, uh, is that it um, defaults. So if you're, there's no activity, it'll automatically hibernate the EC2 instance and that way you won't be charged. So again, uh, very, very cheap, very, very simple way to kind of do it. Uh, the other thing that you kind of have to do here is because the C++ um, uh, SDK that we're running, we actually have to pick the regular Linux AMI, not the Linux 2. Linux 2 is not quite ready for it. Uh, it creates a role for you. And here we just got to pick the VPC that we just created. We only have one subnet, of course. You should add your tags as we always should. And you can see here, it's just a T2 micro, and we spin it up. And so while that's thrown in the oven, I'll kind of just skip over into um, the um, environment that I've got it created. Uh, you can see here, we went in. Uh, one of the first things I did, of course, was go through and, and download or uh, pull from Git the repos. Um, and once we did that, um, one of the other big things we had to do, and this is one thing that I was hoping, actually, the Cloud9 would be a better setup and the AMI is just not set up for C++ development and Lambda integration. So you still have to go through and do a lot of installing of the dependencies, which again, I, I think is a little bit unfortunate. Now the good thing is of course you only have to do this once, 
um, the AMI, like you know, it hibernates, it's there, so you don't have to go and set that particular um, EC2 instance up again. You can start it, stop it, hibernate it, uh, you won't get charged for it, and then uh, all this kind of install was done once, but still you have to go through it. So um, some of the difference here that you'll notice from the last one, instead of saying app get, we're just gonna be using yum because of the version of the uh, Linux AMI. Um, you only have to do this one package, whereas there were several before. Uh, so it does actually have the developer kit installed. Um, however, the developer kit doesn't have uh, CMake installed. And if you just say yum install CMake, it'll actually install an old version of CMake at two point something. So you do have to go grab something that's a little bit later. And here I'm grabbing 3.19, just the latest one that happens to be here now. And then just running this uh, sort of command will uh, install CMake at a newer version. You do again, and this is what I say that I was hoping you wouldn't have to do on this AMI, but you still have to go through and uh, build the SDK and the Lambda runtime. Uh, again, very quick, it's not a big deal, but you still have to kind of go through and do it once to install it. And then of course, build your application, which would expect. Um, some of the small differences here, of course, um, you know, I'm have pulling the Cloud9 GitHub repo instead of the uh, local one. Um, the other thing that's a little bit different is if we go into the CMake, we can see here previously we, we were using this one. Now we have this no libc option. Um, because we know the uh, environment that we're going into and we know that it's the, um, the Linux environment, we're matched, we don't have to carry all the libraries with us. I was hoping it actually would be smaller. However, if I go down here and I just compare the two, so I did it once without the option, then one again, once again, it dropped the size from 19 megs to 14 megs. Again, not a huge difference. Um, of course, smaller is always better when you're Lambda function. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see now when we run it, whether or not uh, it'll actually increase their runtime or uh, the uh, load time. So I'll just kind of go through this quickly. Uh, if you did the previous one, you don't have to recreate the role. The only thing that you would have to do is kind of go into AIM and your role was still there uh, and just copy that, a that uh, ARN for the role that you have to create. Um, if you don't have that role already created or you delete it, you just have to go back and redo this, uh, these sets of steps here. Very straightforward. And then the deploy, the only thing that's different here in the deploy is of course my name. I just named the function. I just put a C++ Cloud9 at the end of it. And that's it. And you can go and invoke it just like we did previously. And I actually went back and invoked it from uh, my command line on my PC just to make sure that, you know, developing on Cloud9 versus developing on my PC, does it change anything? It doesn't as expected. Going through the CLI is exactly the same whether the CLI is on my PC uh, through WLS2 or if it's in the uh, Cloud9 environment. So with that, we kind of can deploy it, run it through. So the other thing, you know, again, the main reason why we're doing this video is to compare um, developing on Cloud9 versus developing on my PC. Um, because I have to go through all the setup, I don't see a huge difference. The one thing is that it is nice is that it is isolated onto that EC2 instance. Again, you could stop it. You could even go and make an image of that uh, particular AMI once it's loaded and just kind of just keep reusing that AMI. So that's kind of nice. Um, the other thing that we were very interested in is because I could go in and do this flag, would the actual load time be faster? It is, but it is simply, it's not a big hit. Um, if I looked at the, the previous one in the previous video, you'll notice that the first time that I loaded, it was 16 milliseconds. Now it's down to 10 milliseconds. So it did get faster with the smaller um, package, but again, milliseconds is really not something that I would even let influence my decision, to be honest. And then after you got that first initial load and it's kind of warmed, you can see all the subsequent ones are less than a millisecond, which is the same as uh, the previous time. So again, um, the actual... Not, be, not having to carry all those packages only drops us down from, you know, again, 19 megs, 14 megs. I don't think that's a big uh, impact uh, to what we're uh, doing. I think the bigger question is whether or not you like developing in this particular environment, this web environment. And there is some integration here that I actually haven't gone through, which, you know, certainly may be another advantage. Um, or whether you'd rather have it on your PC, it's local, you know, you don't have to worry about anything. Um, especially if your uh, people have, uh, you know, fall in love with their IDEs a little bit. So if you have a, a particular IDE you really want to develop in, then maybe you want to be on your PC. 
However, you may not be able to install everything and have all the control to your PC. It may not be your personal PC, but a work PC where things are locked down. Um, so again, I think this one, I don't see any real advantages in the performance or the setup. Again, you still have to install all those packages. I think it's more about whether the environment is something you're more comfortable with or if you have any specific constraints um, from your work environment that probably uh, will not allow you to either set up on your PC or set up the Cloud9. Again, Cloud9 does require you to be coming in from the outside world. Um, so that may be uh, a restriction in your um, in your work environment that you have. So with that, again, very quick video. Just want to kind of run through uh, developing on Cloud9. It's easy. It's pretty simple. Uh, if it's something that you want to do on a web base instead of playing around with your PC, um, I think it's a great option. I don't think performance-wise, though, it makes any sort of difference whether you do it on Cloud9 or you do it onto your PC. So with that, thanks. And I think the next one that we will try is to do with a container and deploy the container. And with that, thanks and have a good day.